Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we got some special guests on the show. Matt Reed and Ian Eggleston are going to be joining me this week in the podcast to go over our Adepticon adventures and the lead up to Matt Mold and how he did in the tournament. This episode 514, Hattie Hattie, let's get rowdy. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clix singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you want to buy it directly from the source, go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIALH10, D-I-A-L-H-10. Ten for ten percent off your Hero Clicks order. Only works on in stock items. No pre orders. No promotions. No specials. None of that stuff. Uh, joining me in the studio is Ian Eggleston. What's going on, Ian? Oh, I'm feeling so Roadhouse tonight. Oh, jeez, feeling a little uh, yeah, no feeling a little Dalton right now, Ian. Oh yeah, I'm feeling like smoking a cigarette in every scene of the movie I'm in, <laughs> and then maybe ripping a throat out or two. Okay. <laughs> what a wild ride uh, and yeah. then we also have a uh, special guest matt reed how's it going matt i'm doing good uh watched roadhouse a few weeks ago it's a it's a movie the new one or the old one the new uh the new, the new one. one we haven't seen the new uh, one yet we just oh you haven't the seen the new one, one for the first time like today first time i thought you guys one. were talking about the new one the new one's even more crazy is it really because oh, it's so it's a it's high totally bar Really That's a high. really high bar. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's pretty insane. I mean, I've, I've seen the Patrick Swayze one, but I will be honest, the new one is even... I mean, it's got Conor McGregor, and it's it's outrageous. Right, but they, like... It stops being about bars. Like, I don't want to get into it, but it just yeah, it, that's, it becomes like a turf we're war ahead, movie. <laughs> it, it, I mean, <laughs> it's the same. This exact same concept as the really? new one, too. It's a, ter- it's a turf war. Okay. 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 All yeah. right. If it's even more, uh, I'm, I'm excited. We're probably doing the doubleheader tonight of... OG Roadhouse and then Jake Gyllenhaal Roadhouse probably after this podcast. I mean, you can do the Roadhouse well, right? trilogy where we watch Roadhouse, Roadhouse again uh, to understand the nuances of Roadhouse and then watch the Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal Roadhouse or do we just watch Jake Gyllenhaal Roadhouse after this? It is interesting how the principles of the Ghost Rider trilogy does enhance so many uh, sequel movie series. It translates. It really does. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 not opposed to watching roadhouse again before watching roadhouse you know oh, you're insane uh it's it'll be a good time uh anyways <laughs> let's go ahead we'll start off with what made us happy this last week uh matt do you have something that made you happy this week uh you know the beginning of the week was nice it was nice and warm and then uh of course working outside all day it's nice for having that 70 degree weather but we ended up getting pretty cold here at the end i think we're supposed to get the 30s nine or 36 tonight so back in the cold not too happy about that but otherwise great week right on uh ian what about yourself oh this was uh this might have even been last week but i don't care i'm gonna say it i finally completed my moe chase set i finally got a mephisto from listener jackson so thank you jackson smith for getting that my way i appreciate that um i mean honestly like Life has been so crazy. I've, a lot of things have made me happy, but I think um, probably the most exciting thing was that today, as of recording, uh, we got our Deadpool brick sent to us by WizKids, and it was a lot of fun to get into that. I was actually editing the video for it right before this, so you guys will probably see that. You'll probably see that before you hear this. That so correct. that's what's making me happy. I'm excited for you guys to see all this stuff. It's uh, It's shaping out to be a really good set. There is a... A golden man, a golden god, if you will. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say it. A Dennis Reynolds colossus <laughs> in this set that I think will really shock people. I think it's gonna make waves in the community immediately. <laughs> so be on really? your toes. Exciting. No, oh, he is. Yeah, gosh, he's so gnarly. Uh, that's pretty much right up there too with what made me happy this last week. Uh, I'll I'll throw out one minor thing. Uh, shout out to a buddy out there in Sioux Falls. He saw that I was getting interested in Marvel Crisis Protocol, and he actually gave me a ton of like X Men figures and the original core set and a play mat and all this stuff. And it's like not cheap either. That's like probably I don't know two hundred bucks worth of stuff he probably gave me just because he thought like, hey, you know, if you're getting into it, I don't play it anymore. So here you go. So it's pretty fun. I don't know if I'll totally 
deep dive crazy in a Marvel Crisis Protocol besides like play it every once in a while, have a good time. So no worries there, guys. My number one love always and forever is Hero Clicks, but it's just something that's kind of cool. I mean, it's a good way to get into it, getting something that somebody's not using anymore. I mean, that's the trick with Hero Clicks too. You, as soon as you learn like somebody's new to the game, you're like, oh, don't worry. I got stuff for you. Here's oh, I got so much stuff for you. No, please, please take my stuff. <laughs> please. please. <laughs> It's just sitting in there doing nothing. Please take it. But this week's episode, I really wanted to focus on the journey that Matt had leading up to Adepticon and getting his, what'd you get, Matt? Was it 10th place? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So it was top eight. Uh, yeah. So I was 10th place. So uh, Matt, why don't you just kind of go ahead into the background, a little bit of yourself as a player, and then we'll kind of start going into the master mold team and then how you did it when just really quick here for the listener, Adepticon, we've already mentioned a million times, was one of the most absolute stacked fields I have ever seen for like a 48 person, 49, whatever person tournament. 47. 47, thank you. So 47 person tournament was like, boom, I know that person. I know that person. I've heard that person before. I've seen them top this before. So absolutely stacked field. It was just incredible that Matt was able to get 10. So it's really awesome. So Matt, why don't you go ahead and like start off? Like, why did you choose Master Mold? Why, why do we start building the team that you're building? Let's start there at the beginning. Okay. Well, you know, whenever I... Uh... It was always kind of something I was playing around with, and uh, it, me and Ian even talked about it before, kind of like, hey, dude, this, this is kind of insane with Scott Porter coming out, and I've heard people talk about another podcast about, hey, you know, that's a possible person that can be brought in, but I didn't see why people weren't playing it in uh, Modern, so it's always been kind of one I played. I played it into uh, broadcasts, the broadcast tournament. I was like, you know what? I'm going to play the Master Mold build, and... Uh, I won that round with Master Mold at 200, and I was like, gosh, this guy's he's got some cool things. And so all of a sudden, Calder's like, hey, are you going to go to Adepticon? I was like, hey, you know what? You, let's, do, let's go ahead and get a, a room, but I'm not going to play 300. I was like, I'm just going to go have fun. We're going to do Super Seals. Me and Calder were like, okay, we're going to do Super Seals. Just have a good time, not worry about all that stress. And then all of a sudden, I see a message saying, hey, Matt, it's Ian. I'm going to go. <laughs> So, are you going to play 300 Modern? It's like, dude, it's already full up. So, I think I can. He's like, no, I just looked at it. There's They opened up to 48 now. You can get in. I was like, well, oh, crap. So, I guess uh, if you'll play my Super Seal that I had already bought, I guess I will play in the 300 Modern. So, he said yes. And all of a sudden, it was like, okay, off to the races. Let's start practicing. So, uh, Calder, you were my first match. Whenever I was like, okay, let's start putting stuff together. Let's... Uh, see how we can get master mold to work. And um, of course, before that, you know, Ian's like, okay, let's just, let's just get ideas. It's like, and the biggest thing, it, it pretty much just said it right off the bat, uh, you know, 200 points, we got a hundred points to work with. Actually, I take that back. You got 50 points to work with because you're going to put the porters on this because uh, there's just so much utility, but 50 points was like, okay, what do we put here? And Ian just like, no, he's like, dude, MOE chases. I mean, there's so much you can do with that. And uh, the biggest thing was, uh, for the MOEs, in my opinion, was Iron Inquisitor. I mean, I'm giving Master Mold Prob, I'm, I'm perplexing him up two times. And with the black shirt quarter beside him, he's hitting, he's a 22 defense at all times. So the only thing that shuts that down is, of course, Pulse Wave shutting off other things. But uh, it just seemed like a good defensive shell, which, like I said, Calder, you played me first, and I played it like a defensive shell. I Which just kind of just focus, you know, <laughs> it's a, it's it's a problem. It's not the way. It. Yeah. It turned out after that game, Calder beat me. I played super slow. I think in 50 minutes, I may have done, we may have done two rounds, two or three rounds. It was awful. So I was like, I'm just not playing this right. So Ian played me. I still played it as a defensive shell, but it wasn't till probably like my third game that I was like, oh, there's a shield TA. Why am I not shielding? for three times and shooting for seven across the board because I have 11 range with shield. So I'm like, um, I'm really just not playing this right. So all of a sudden I'm double targeting, shooting for seven. And all of a sudden it's making a big difference of there's not many people with base range eight in the set. That's colossal. that can see over everything and just snipe you from across the board on a small map. And 
it just kind of changed the whole way the game's played. You know, I'm still being defensive, but with me choosing to shoot and just build up the uh, uh, the factory dial, which is the biggest thing, is constantly hitting with the Sentinel robot is also making the factory dial go up. In one turn, you can get three clicks on the factory dial if you just hit a leadership, passively click up once, and then making the attack. And there you go, you're at 75, uh, yeah, 50 points on turn one if it goes right. And that's yeah, you know, two quarters. <laughs> with a uh, with like defensive shell being noted for this build, it's really interesting how like the nuance of that can change pretty easily. You know, there were practice games that Matt and I played where calling out Phoenix Sentinel was actually a mistake because it's like, okay, well, I'll just go kill him. He's seventy five points. He's four clicks. He has a stop click. But I know I'm probably not killing Master Mold, so now I'm going to divert all my attention to that. And so in select matches, you know you have the opportunity to be more defensive. A lot of the time, the opponent is still going to come to you. But in more ma in, in other matches where maybe your opponent lets you run up the factory dial a bit more, getting that Phoenix Sentinel out to just nuke them was very advantageous in some matches. And then uh, we'll hear about the matches later of like the <laughs> insta-KOs with the Porters and some Tarot shenanigans. But there's an opportunity where it's like... I mean, there's just no way to stop that. It's like, you have to initiate on me... And if you don't, like, you're not going to score anything. I guess we can go 0-0. Zero, zero. But also, I'm just shooting you from across the board, so there is that offensive pressure. It's not exactly an alpha strike, but uh, it, it's a really interesting build in the sense that it can be very, very defensive, very hard to crack, but then a flip of the factory dial, you know, flip of that switch, here we go, I am going to clobber you. So, I mean, to be honest, really like, cool. if you would have looked at like, I probably played about 20 total games between online games and local games i mean if you would have saw my game against calder and the games i started playing at adepticon i played the team completely different from start to finish and i started realizing there's so many different things i could do to get things off or you know just to give you an idea i started realizing there's a ton of mystics on teams and it is super easy for me to just say, okay, I'm going to shoot a Mystics character on purpose with Master Mold, take a click of damage, and then just send Scott Porter across the board because he just makes a Robot Sentinel retail for him. And all of a sudden I have a Porter on, right next to who just gave me Mystics, and then I'm pulse waving, putting down the chainsaw, you know, chainsaw go brr, and hit him. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it, it's just, okay, if I lose a 25-point Porter, who cares? Guess what? I, at that point, I should have three or four more on the board next turn after doing that. Yeah, and I, I know during Adepticon as well, Matt, there were points where you were getting questions from your opponents on how the factory dial worked, which I yes. think that's overall my favorite part of the build. Uh, building on the fringe, that's where I live. That's what I love. So to see it do well is really cool. <laughs> but getting questions during the game where it's like we're burning clock, learning how to turn the factory yeah. dial and you're just like come on like let me make my scots <laughs> so just to kind of give you an idea i mean that game with me and calder may have been three turns yeah it was a uh, game. and in adepticon i only had one game that i didn't shuffle my tarot cards and keep going and get more turns so we were getting minimum five games i had one rice was on the fifth card and it ended but otherwise we were actually shuffling our decks to get get more turns in. I mean, I, I think me and Lucas uh, Van Hollen, we got to turn seven or eight. Oh, wow. Because I was just playing as fast as I can because it's advantageous to me to just keep getting as fast as I can so, so I can get easy clicks on my factory dial. And uh, and I did learn really quickly. 22s, even with people at a 14, I don't know how many 14 attacks I went against, but being a 22 is a hard number to hit still. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, uh, trying to hit a eight. I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, uh, people have got crazy attacks, but 22 just seems to be that number that's like, okay, that's actually pretty hard to hit, you know, without getting it down. Stats are so yeah. insanely inflated today. Kind of speaking about like your games at Adepticon, what were matchups you were really surprised about? Like things that people were playing that actually caught you off guard? Uh, and then what was it like playing in just the deep, deep Kong meta? And how did that Oh, man. Yeah, lots of Kongs had to be killed. Uh, uh, 
But you were killing Kongs, lost... though. That's what it's about, killing Kongs. The, the coolest thing I can say is the two people I lost to in my matchups were the two people that were one and two. Lucas Van Hollen and that, uh, I think it's Anthony. Was it Anthony that was the second yeah, place Anthony winner? Morgan. Yeah, so those are the two people that beat me. So me and Lucas's game, I would be up on points on my turn, and he would be up on points on his turn. And it was literally uh, 50 to 60 points difference that, you know, got him the win. And so, I mean, and that's the first place winner. And his matchup, you know, luckily for me, Pulse Wave is really the answer to Mystics. It's the answer to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the ranged attacks is the answer to... uh, uh, the X Men rollout, which is with a uh, Apocalypse Genesis. I mean, all my all my team is is ranged attacks and pulse wave, multiple multiple pulse waves. Uh, whether it's with Prime uh, Nimrod and doing single target three damage, or uh, the Porters doing theirs with the knockback, which is doing two damage. I mean, there's just uh, some good things. I think the you know Anthony's team. I'll be honest, the one thing that uh, just smoked me was Anthony's team. I decided to go on Morlock Tunnels, which was probably a terrible idea. Uh, I should have done uh, Mother World Castle because I have such a better advantage at shooting in that outdoor map than just barricading myself in and limiting my shots. But Kong is Kong. He came in and just started quaking my team to death. And so uh, just a terrible game, but he played it amazingly and, you know, wiped me. I think, uh, my second game, Ian was there. Actually, my uh, there was two games I did it, uh, but uh, I think the second game was probably like, okay, I lost to Lucas, but it was a good fight. The second game was like, okay, this is a good team because it's ridiculous. I had all five of my porters out on the table. I generated them, and uh, I had both my Nimrods on the table at 35 points. And even though the game was won, I had enough banked that I had a 225-point uh, Phoenix Sentinel that I generated just for fun even though the game was over but I just had those points so I had I mean was that almost 400 points more than the build holder total on the board um, uh, I was telling Ian I was like uh, you know I was almost like I have extra 25 points can I borrow your porter that I've just killed just to be able to generate it <laughs> you know I mean it's from outside the game does it matter <laughs> so uh, I was starting to beg for porters you know uh, but yeah I mean uh, the games I won, I mean, it, it was just crazy. I mean, the game you guys were talking about was against the uh, Alex Mater, uh, not a, a well-known player. Uh, he came across the board with Spider-Man, Carnage, and Venom Thanos. And they were all just sitting right there, missed their attacks on Master Mold. And then I draw the Pulse Wave card on Tarot. And all of a sudden, I generate three porters, and all three of them pulse wave, and I'm doing three damage three times to all these guys that's within four. And I'm doing, uh, I do that three times, so three as nine, 18, 27 damage in one turn, one turn to team, and said, okay, I'm, that's crazy. And we shook <laughs> hands and that. called it there. <laughs> it's like, okay, what do you do about that? I mean, it's just insane that, you know, this porter can just be right there and you know spider-man's got all the rollouts but with pulse wave going off he gets nothing and he is just newt and same with carnage uh same thing i mean i don't i don't have to worry about outwitting things because they're protected who cares if they don't have the powers you know um but uh it was just really fun i mean like i said i uh i was itching to still play this game you know normally after you play like six games you're like uh you know what i'm that was a slog i'm kind of tired I generally, you know, all my matches were a lot of fun. I didn't have anybody have any hateful comments or anything like that. I just had a lot of just, lots of just fun. I honestly was like, this is the funnest team I, I've i super enjoyed piloting. I loved coming in with my giant tackle box of just things that I was bringing off the sideline because, uh, I mean, the biggest thing that this team came together is like Calder, Ian, Simeon. I mean, other people, you know, for my locals, I had to borrow so many porters and so much stuff to make this <laughs> team happen. It impossible. I mean, sliding it, under the door, you know. At the I last mean, like, 
for it. I, Ian's <laughs> like, Matt, here's the deal. If you say you're going to play it, I will find you porters. I was like, dude, if, <laughs> okay. I said, dude, do you believe in me? I got this. You know, and, and as soon as he started saying that, I was like, that's when I took it seriously. I was like, let's just go play as many games as I can. You know, I went and asked Lucas Van Hollen online to play against me. And, you know, I'm pl- trying to play as many people to get an idea and just get, you know, anybody that tells me, hey, this is what you could do. I just said, okay, that's cool. And now I know. And that's how it works. And how many practice uh, games do you think you played, Matt? Oh, I, I guarantee you, I played twenty games up till Adepticon, twenty okay. to twenty-five. So, uh, you know, three a week at our locals, and then uh, online. I mean, I was just begging Bill. I was like, Bill, <laughs> I don't care what you play. Just, just play me, so we can try this oh, out. Yeah, you know? that's right. I still I need like, to mail Bill his prize <laughs> for losing. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not <laughs> talking about the prize, but yeah. Either way. <laughs> We had, dude, and so some of those were just fun games, but, you know, even fun games where we're both trying to figure out our teams, it's beneficial because I go, oh, this is how I need to really do this to counter Kale or counter, uh, you know, Ghost Rider or, yeah. you know, just th- these other things, you know, it's like, you don't know unless you just play a whole bunch of games, you know, and I mean, online games, I, I probably did 10, 15 of them just on that, you know, online games that I just was begging people, hey, do you got time that does for speak to like a kind of like a higher order of players? I think you know a lot of the time discourse around more competitive play is that oh well this figure gets countered by that so you just lose or you know hey you can't play this because this exists and it's like you don't really know that. I think a lot of people lose themselves in the theory crafting aspects of hero clicks and they write off things that would be good ideas because they never decide to practice it and this completely out of right field like you cannot nobody had master mold on their bingo card zero people did i have a good story about this after as well so play what you, you know, want to play work on it and you can probably make it work like you can be successful with goofy teams i told ian i was like ian you know it's like i don't have a prime and it's like do you have a uh, <laughs> uh i'm all or what's his name the guy that comes you were together playing absorbing I, man initially yeah, so, yeah he, he's like you know what the absorbing man but he's like you know what's kind of funny I think it's actually even better. He's like, have you seen what Roz does on the sideline? I'm like, dude, I don't know what Roz does on the sideline. Yeah, who like, does, right? Like, he's, like, he's like, he gets all assassins plus one. I'm like, dude, I'm playing robots over here. He's like, who's what's white short pearly guy? It's like, he's got everything. It's like, oh, crap. So I'm making five porters, and they're not just 11s anymore. They're 12s. That and, was probably the funniest like team building <laughs> thing I heard like oh, in dude. like the weeks leading up to it. When you guys Take had said time. that Ross Ghoul adds plus one attack for assassins, and then yeah, Scott Porter has like just every. I had. Player. I died. I thought that was so funny. It was so. I had every it was awesome. every game. I had somebody go, "No, you don't get the plus twelve because the Porter didn't start there." It's like, "Oh no, no, I'm not getting it from that. He's just an assassin, and Ross is on my sideline." He's like, "They're like, oh, interesting." I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's, it's insane. I mean, yeah, I'm not getting, I'm not cheating it out there. He's just that all my porters are just natural 12s now, no matter what, because Ross is on the sideline. So absolutely it, sick. it, it yeah. just was like, it, I was like, dude, that's genius. I was like, I, I, I wouldn't even thought to, or, I, I mean, probably that was the only prime Ross on any of the team builds. Oh, yeah. Nobody so, played prime Ross. And it's really funny how that came Maxwell. about too, because, Initially, the build was 260 because the black shirt had a ring as well. So he paid 10 points mm-hmm. for the ring on that. Yeah. So I was literally just looking at 40 point figures and I saw Prime Roz and clicked on it, read the trait, <laughs> and I'm just like, wait a second, like this actually works. And then, yeah, it's like, you know, you might as well do that over Prime Absorbing Man, who might come out and also might give up points. He can yeah. be one turned. It's not ideal, but it is a possibility. It's kind of that same risk that, um, you know, in previous modern ages, the Destroyer Prime ran, where if Sky Tyrant caught you on a good day, like, he'll get through you. So, less liability and more guarantees. I mean, yeah, difference of 11 and a 12, like we were talking about 22 defenses being, you know, a bit of a guarantee in the defensive area. A 12 attack is considerably better than an 11. You know, a 12 on an 18 is a 6 rather than a 7. It's huge. I mean, I, like I said... Uh, him on the sideline, I was like, okay. I mean, it doesn't make sense if you only have one porter. I mean, you're given one. But at most of my games, I was making at least four or five porters on the table. So, I mean, that's all five of them getting plus ones. It's a, it's a perplex on each one of them, and it's for free. So I'm giving up sideline space for it, and it was like, okay. 
I think that is a awesome play. Uh, but, you know, th- there's a couple of things that, you know, I was learning as a player, you know, Pulse Wave, even though it was friendly to me on the Scott Porters, I had to remember not to use my perplexes if my Scott Porter was uh, too close to my guys because it just shuts it all off. And that's stuff I didn't know about, you know. But then when I learned that, I was like, oh, this is even better because now I know he just perplexed all his guys up. It works the same way. I send my porter out there with the retail, and next thing you know, and I'm shutting off all the perplexes. So now you're just your naked whatever you were before, and then Master Mold takes a shot or outwit something and you know nuke somebody. I mean, the fact that Master Mold has leadership outwit uh, eleven range. I mean, I just outwit senses on your black shirt porter, and now you don't have your plus one defenses anymore because I can just one turn him with four damage, and you know outwit that senses and he's gone. So. Um, being on a small map didn't hurt me as much because most times if I was on a short map, I was going first and I was just praying that I just kept hitting leadership. So I got a free leadership because I got first turn immunity, yeah. which is, you know, good those, in my those opinion. Are a few aspects for the team that I did have questions on. I was like, man, how is this team? I looked at that. Like the, <laughs> here's, you know, another example for like, don't trust theory crafting. You know, I looked at that team and I'm just like, how does this survive on a small map? Like, there's just no way. And it was just, it was a non-factor. And another thing to talk about, Matt, is you have the black shirt Scott on your team, so you have the three community re-rolls. How yeah. often were you using those for your leaderships with Master Mold? So uh, I would use uh, the first two and keep one in the bank whenever I needed it for, like, a hit or something. But on that first turn, I always used it if I missed it because first turn mattered on getting yeah. as many clicks as I could. And it made the tempo... I mean, even I, I don't know how many times I re-rolled it and I still missed it, but I was like, okay, I'm still got two in the bank. But really hitting that leadership role was really important to me just to get through. I mean, getting three clicks on turn one or two is just so big. I mean, uh, I mean, we're talking, and that, uh, that's getting you to making a porter first turn if you had it right. So, uh, uh, but yeah, I think him... You know, the re-rolls, there's nothing else I'm really re-rolling uh, other than maybe a Scott Porter just to keep him alive. Yeah. But, or, or an attack roll. Leadership or willpower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And ruin their I, day. I mean, it worked out pretty good. You know, I was like, I don't want that guy to attack me again. Reroll that leadership. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, that was a fun time. <laughs> Not for Calder, but no. he still won the game, so. <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. I honestly, another, and I, oh. I said that. At the, sorry, go ahead, Ian. Oh, I was just going to say another story about Master Mold is that throughout the event, because uh, I was not playing in modern, I was kind of doing some recording. Uh, I was watching Matt's games. You know, I, 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 I wanted to see it, so you know, here I'm standing there, and a few players, you know, I won't say any names here, would walk by, and they'd just be like, "Man, like, what the heck? How does this build work?" I was like, "Oh, let me tell you a bit about it," and so I would kind of give them the rundown of it. But prior to the event starting, you know, with us talking about this being a very stacked field, and it was, there was another player who said, like, yeah, you know, there's probably, I'd say, like, 44, 45 out of the 47 teams are good. There's some, you know, bad teams. Like, somebody's playing Master Mold, and it's just like, oh, you think that's a bad team? (laughs) Sure enough, that same player came over to me later while I was watching Matt's game, and he's like, all right, like, explain this to me. And so I ran down, like, you know, the basic strategy for it. And he's like, yeah, but, like, how does this and that and that work? I was like, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, by the end of it, he was going, wait, is Master Mold? No. I mean, is it? Is Master Mold good? I don't. There's just no way. Like, he just did not want to believe it. I'm like, well, you know, hey, here it is. If uh, we had some more time, like, if we cut to top 16, there's a good chance that Matt could have surprised even more people. Like, people like Pat Frazier who ask me, you know, it's like, do you have a recording of this match? I want to see this team. That's who I have in top cut. Do you have a game with George playing? I'm like, sadly, I don't. If Pat were to, like, say, a player like Pat or Pat himself, ask about, like, how do I play against Master Mold? He has nothing to go off of. How do you play against Master Mold? You'll have to find out when you're playing against it. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Like, that's that's exactly why the fringe is so freaking cool, is that, you just, your opponent doesn't have anything to go off of. And you can, you know, maybe the wrench isn't as strong as, like, Carnage Surfer double-tapping you. But 
you catch somebody off guard and now maybe their whole whole game's unwinded. Like they're they don't know what to do. Yeah. The, I mean the surprise is so powerful. I, I, I like uh the first the last game I had, it was, you know, uh I can't remember the guy's name. He's a younger guy, but he was like, dude, I know nothing about Master Mold. Let me see his card. And the turn started. And nothing against him. He just literally was just confused by this this figure. It's it's literally like a a book you have to read. And he was like, probably five, maybe ten minutes. It was like asking questions. And he was like, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you kill my hundred point apocalypse, or sorry, not my hundred point, but my Genesis and Apocalypse, I'm just gonna concede because I want you to get the points because I took up all this time, and I don't want you to have to just slog through a hundred point. APOC legacy and I killed him and he was like shook my hand he's like I can see he's like that's a fun team I was like that's pretty cool Dang. and I was like I was like thank you because whew, it was that was a Ooh, I was really stressful yeah. because you know my biggest thing is I need to get through as many turns as I can you know it's just how the team works you know you want as many turns as you can but the guy was really cool and he was like dude you like I said you got them very easily I mean he had a whole kit full points, but when you're pulse waving them into a wall pro- over and over again, and uh, I think one thing that you know everybody asks me is like, "Oh, Master Mold's power cosmic." I'm like Master Mold has zero keywords that you can pick to get your Avengers plus one on him, so you don't get that. Uh, so that's it, it, as much as it stinks to have his powers be outwitted. I just take out outwits with the pulse wave, and he's back to having his powers and. Uh, I think it's eleven clicks of damage you have to do to kill him with a with a stop click, and yeah, I guess it's the Iron Inquisitor Mastermind too. Like yeah, it's the Iron Inquisitor Mastermind. And the other thing is, is uh, I did have one game in practice where I was on stop click. I took all the damage. Somebody actually hit Master Mold all the way down to stop. I think that was and me. so yeah, it might have been you. But what it was <laughs> is I you know I get to choose turn and beginning of turn, so I get to lo- roll my leadership because it's there. I then heal off stock click with the porter, and then my porter had my white shirt porter actually chose to do the support ring, so I supported for four or sorry for three, and then my other white my black shirt porter just used his normal support to heal another two, so all of a sudden I just healed six clicks back up and I landed back on my leadership click and I'm back in business you know just keep going, so I mean I and just make a few more attacks with whoever I want to. So it, it just kind of worked. I mean, the synergy actually was really good, uh, you know, to make it all work. And um, if anybody was super equipped, like there was a couple of times that actually Iron Inquisitor didn't come on the board. I actually had to go into Killmonger because now all my people have a rollout on, you know, these people that were equipped. And that was even better than, you know, that's a better rollout than the Inquisitor Mastermind. So... Uh, yeah. but it was just a, it was just a fun time. I mean, there's nothing else to say that, you know, even with my losses, I was smiling, you know, from ear to ear, just having a good time. People asking questions about it. And, you know, that's, yeah, man. that to me was the most fun, and, you know, looking back on it, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I talk about football too, you know, people that we played in football go on to win a championship. Okay. That's cool because we got beat by the best. I mean, master mold played, the two best players at Adepticon and those two were the, you know, one and two, you know, and I held in there with both the, you know, not, I won't say this. I didn't hold, hold in there. I got zeroed on against Anthony's team, but <laughs> Lucas and me did, we did go back and forth. It was a good, good fight, but you know, Lucas ended up beating Anthony, which means that, you know, master mold was right there with them, which is pretty exciting. Uh, Another aspect of that too, with you being the Adepticon fellowship winner, Matt, uh, prior to the tournament starting, a few of the WizKids judges judges had walked over and said, like, hey, you know, keep your eye out. If you see anyone for fellowship, just let us know. Like, if you have any anything you want to throw into the hat, like, we'll take it into consideration. I'm like, oh, sure. Towards the end of the event, they walk over to me. They're like, yeah, so, like, who did you see? I was like, well, I mean, who did you guys see? I don't want to like, have any bias or anything, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, the first name, they're like, well, we're thinking Matt Reed. And I'm just like... I mean, I came here with him, so like I can't, <laughs> I can't. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, he just seems like he's having a great time. All of his opponents are too, and I was like, well, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's a bad choice, but I don't want to like 
not that I have like a vote to yeah. cast or anything, but it's like I'm not going to influence that opinion. But uh, yeah, they ended up choosing you because I mean, you're yeah. playing an off the wall team. It was a fun time. Like he said they they come up to me and they're like about to go over here. I just got done pulling my uh, super sealed and noticed that I didn't pull anything over a rare again. And I was like, you know, Anthony was like, "Hey, Matt, we need you real quick." I'm like, "Yes, anything to get me away from this awful boosters <laughs> I just pulled." And so they're like, "Give give Matt a little extra time." I'm like, "No, just go ahead and start the game without me. I don't need that extra time, please." And so you know, it was just like. Yeah, but it was super exciting, man. They came up to me and they're like, "Hey, we just want to give you fellowship and thank you." And I was like, "Man, that's just it's just super cool, you know." Like I said, it, it's always like I said, uh, I was telling somebody, it's like some people think it just because I'm a bigger guy is like I could, I don't know, I guess I come off as like scary mean or something like that, scary. Man. But yeah, yeah. So like I said, I, you know, I've always been a bigger guy, but like I said, I'm, I'm the exact opposite. I'm a little teddy bear. I just you know, I just want to have fun rolling some dice, playing with the figures and. And, and coming, you know, I, I don't think I've came to anything, whether it's worlds or anything that's not kind of off the wall. I mean, Kate Deadpool, well, I played at worlds, uh, last little year, monster. It was a little monster. Sorry. Yeah. It was a little monster scared last year. Kate and Deadpool was the other year. So a little, little monster slingshot, but you know, uh, sometimes you come up with what you think is a super creative team and you try it and it doesn't work out, but this one just happened to right place at the right time you know and good roles so uh okay well going forward matt a few questions on how you feel about the team uh, one will you continue to play master mold does uh does next phase influence this at all are you i know being a deadpool fan you're probably looking for some stuff in deadpool do you think that you're gonna stick with the master mold build going forward for the major events and his Probably last year in modern, I would imagine it's already been uh, like three years. Four, isn't it four years now or something? Right? It Maybe. might be. He's a twenty twenty. Yeah, it's played four years. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, but I, I just to give you an idea, all the things that I borrowed, I pretty much bought. I went ahead and bought four borders. I went ahead and bought the black skull. I traded for a black skull. Um, I got my raws in. So pretty much the answer to your question, I think I'm going to keep playing it because. Yeah. I pretty much decided to go all in and buy what I needed just so I didn't have to keep bumming myself off to the dial H and all my locals and everything like that. Yeah, I can I can still donate a, a yeah. buy from Rod. I he... mean, that's the good thing. You know, I, I'm that way I have ten white shirt porters in my box, you know, on top of the, you know, you know, with my four and your six. Now we got ten on the sideline ready to go. So <laughs> it took a village to build the white shirts. I called my buddy luke i'm like look i need i need your white shirts i had two myself simeon had one calder had one i mean no one else need, you don't need this many white shirt porters unless you're playing master mode it's the only other the only reason to ever do this but <laughs> i was like okay you know let's make it happen and you know just kind of roll some dice oh. and have some fun Another interesting, um, well, actually, second question, and then I'll follow up yeah, with that. Me, um, yeah. Do you think other people are going to play Master Mold after this? Did you have anyone saying that they were thinking about trying the team? Do you expect to see any mirror matches in your future? Man, I, I had so many people say, dude, love the team, love the team. I just don't know. I think people, I mean, it did make top eight. I was I was 10th place. I beat some people that. We're like, dude, this is a cool team. I beat Alex Mater, which is, uh, I mean, US in my opinion, champion, that be a Florida champion, Florida yeah. Champion. And he was complete. He's like, dude, this is a good. Like, before we even played, he's like, dude, this is a awesome team. Two hundred point master mode. Never thought I'd see it. He gets beat by it. He's like, dude, the team's legit. I was like, he just told me. He's like, it's a legit team. I was like, yeah. I was like, I'm very surprised. Like I said, I, I, I said it. You're did not play. I mean, he one hundred percent did Alex Mater things, Alpha went for a big hit and just, you know, Spider-Man could not hit the 22. And if he did hit, it got a uh, uh, mastermind off to Iron Inquisitor that, you know, rolled out of it. And then next thing you know it, I got three targets and just, you know, three targets for a three damage pulse wave with the knockback with Porters. And I was like, okay, uh, that's how you kill a Carnage and a Spider-Man and, you know, all that stuff without any problems. <laughs> so there's not many things that you could say, oh, I, I you know, Spider-Man is not a big deal. Why? Well, he doesn't get anything. You know, there's not many teams that can say, <laughs> I can get rid of that. Or, you know, oh, shoot, Carnage killed my Porter. 
he's going to heal up now because of these hits. I'm, you know, that's a problem. No, because I just make more porters. Or, or the biggest thing I noticed is Prime Nimrod, at, even at low dial for 35 points, I can just single target for three damage every time, as long as I just do a direct diagonal and just target him. So making two of those at 75 points is not too hard. And that's six damage just without a rollout, without anything. You know, you're worried about shape change, you're worried about senses. No. It's the great single target pulse wave that we all know and love from back in the day. Just better. Rest in peace. And you don't have to you don't have to put it on your board and worry about it getting sniped. You you wait till they're up close and he can do something and you make it and it just does it. So uh and you know you'll have, to, you'll have to refresh my memory on this. I can't remember the route you ended up going um with mm-hmm. it. But there was, so initially the build was 260 because it was, you know, the free ring on white shirt, which was yellow, yeah. and the indigo ring on black shirt, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe it was vice versa. Did you end up playing indigo ring on the white shirt, or was yes. it an extra core ring? It was indigo, indigo. I didn't worry about the perplexes um, because most people were getting no bonuses to speak of. So indigo stayed on the white shirt just for the extra support. Um did that and come then, in handy for you do, during the tournament as well? No, because honestly, I, no one could hit Master Mold. I mean, if somebody was to hit him, yeah, it would have come in handy, but it it didn't at that point because no one ever hit him. Um, and then, uh, I mean, it wasn't until like Anthony, like I said, just nuked him. You know, every he just got a colossal quake off that just nuked the entire team. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, um, I think. Man, it's so hard to say, uh, say what I would change, uh, because you know black. You have to start with black skull to make it a theme, and then switch out of them, and then uh, your white shirt pro- porter. I think that might be it. I mean, maybe that is it. Make it the Sinestro ring to perplex down the enemy twice, but that's only if you already have perplex, right? Yeah. So okay, that doesn't matter. So it's just perplex once but well i know the uh i know an alternate angle we had discussed after adepticon and this is a little crazy this might be too offensive but in an era where you know most teams are i think like minimum six figures yours is four swapping out the moe to play a kong who can like we did talk about that twice that's a potential like i i'm not entirely sure where that ranks but once again you know it's theory crafting like you have to go test it I think Kong is a potential filler. It keeps it theme. It's really, really strong, obviously. I mean, we saw how well he did at Adepticon. So, yeah. I think uh, the Cathon is my biggest thing now. Uh, I should have had him on there to begin with, but Cathon on the white shirt porter I start with just makes it better because the Phoenix, you know, I did utilize the, the Dark Phoenix to be able to get him to move. And I started going, oh, crap. Well, three movement just is not. I mean, getting to four movement off of that is so much such a big deal compared to you know uh, the three I was doing every time with it. Range, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah, the pulse wave is now five instead of four, and then you know it, it's it just it just doesn't matter because it's fodder. Send them out there, and uh, Scott having two damage makes him a little better because I was kind of wasting an attack just with one damage just to kind of get him over there. But having oh. two damage actually could damage somebody. Uh, not too many people, but it's enough just to get them over there and possibly punch for two is better than anything. Uh, especially for one, toughness just says, okay, that was stupid. Now, Pulse Wave, now you're doing the real stuff. But, uh, uh, no, it, like I said, it's so hard. I haven't played, I haven't actually played the Kong yet. I haven't fielded it yet. I've seen the wrath of what Kong can do. And it is enticing to be able to just put so much barrier out there, or just all this yeah, that's, terrain. That's one aspect of it where it's like, you know, the MOE are going to offer you more utility, but Kong is so much offense, and you can create so much of the wreckage around your team to where maybe with like enough practice, enough, you know, just kind of awareness for what map you should be on, the yep. wreckage and the placement there could be just massive, especially with Kong acting twice a turn, getting the double willpower. I mean, he he just. The only to- thing I hate about it is shield being lost. No longer my my master oh. mold is now just eight range, no matter what. 
and having 11 range really did make a big deal with the sidestep. Uh, yeah. Just made him, a, I mean, it just made him where he could just shoot bombs from across a short map. Um, yeah, that makes sense. And so, I don't know. I, you know, Shield it's a hard TA, uh, it's a hard, it really is a hard trade off. Uh, but, I mean, it could be the play. And like I said, this this team does counter APOC and Genesis. I mean, uh, you don't equip hardly anybody besides Porter, and you don't ever punch nobody. You're always just shooting. You're shooting, shooting, shooting. That rollout means nothing. And senses and all that means nothing when it's being pulse waved. So, I don't know. It, it is the counter to the... If you're worried about APOC and Genesis, you mean, there's just not a worry about it on this team. I love it. I think... But, uh... Oh yeah, the no the the conclusion to the master mold journey oh, is yeah. that on the day the last day of Adepticon when they're playing the top eight, the eighth seed Matt Ventura oh, was yeah. there. He wasn't there, and they're like, "Well, where is he?" It's like, "Well, where's the ninth seed? We don't know. We think he left already." Tenth seed? Oh, he's standing right over there. You can't miss him. He's he's <laughs> he's a brick house over there. <laughs> and so oh. for like what? Like for like five minutes, like okay, we got to drive back to the hotel. We got to get the Scott Porters. We got to get the whole team. Got to get everything together. And then Matt walked through the door. But for a minute, we thought that uh, Matt was going to get to squeak in <laughs> and play Matt. Yes. My my thing was is I was like, you know what? I would love to play this team, but we did just divvy out everybody's Porters back to who they needed to go to. All the Black School had to go here. The then Prime Nimrod went back here. It was all packed away at everybody else's stuff. Yeah, and you know, and then Calder's like, "Matt, let's go." So as we're walking to go to the truck and go get it, he was like, "I think, I think that was Matt," uh, and I was like, "Oh, okay." So we don't need to leave. He's like, "Nah, we don't need to anymore." He's like, "Oh crap," you yeah, know. Was, got excited. Was full mission, Ooh. like Mission Impossible. Let's go. All right, go back, run, get everything, and then yeah, inst- just oh, instantly. So oh, okay. So <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Call it off. But no, it was funny. I I, I had a. Ian was just kind of like, you know, I appreciate it because it was a lot of fun. But, you know, you know you're playing these games, but I got Ian over here. He's like, hey, man, are you good over here? It's like, you thirsty? You hungry? It's like, dude, please, <laughs> thank you. Bring me bring me some nutrients. I'm just dying over here because, I'm, you know, you're talking a, oh, a mile a minute about everything. And <laughs> I went to was... that I went to that event vicariously playing through Matt. I love to, oh. I just love to see these things do well and to know that, I mean, I've. I, I added a few things, but Matt put the work in. But you know, I still wanted to support it, and I wanted oh, to it, share share with it was others a team. that Master Mold is playable. You know, it was a hundred percent a team. Like I said, I give a lot. A lot of this team is things that I, I for one, does, did not see. You know, Ian was like, "Dude, this, this," and then I was like, "I'm going to try it." And whatever worked, I just kept it on the team. And I think it was a, it, like I said if people give you criticism on your team because it's not working or an idea that they think will work, try it and heck become a better player because now you have tried something you didn't think of and it made you better. I mean, plain and simple. Uh, but yeah, you have to be, you know, it, that's another just aspect. I think that players lock themselves into is a lot of times people open themselves up to criticism. They say, what do you think of my build? And you go, I don't think this is going to work, you know. And then they respond with, well, actually it does. It's like, well, I think you need to either like go back to the drawing board or you need to be more confident in your play or you need to be open to criticism. Like you can't have all of those things at once. Um, and a lot of it, once again, it just it boils down to actually playing what you say you're going to play. Because if you just chalk it up to you know, a simulated match of like, oh, this is how it goes, there's so many nuances in hero clicks and there's so many things where if you have a complicated enough team, like people forget stuff all the time that can change a match in itself. There's so many components. You can't just break it down to black and white of this beats that because that's not always the case. And dice can be the ultimate decider it can dig yeah. in early grave. You know, I, I do have to say this cause it is funny, but you know, I'm playing 300 modern. That's the thing that normally is a grind. But I, I laugh because every round I'm coming around and trying to find Calder. Oh, no. And Calder's in these super seals, and he just looks so sad. I'm like, dude, I did it good. He's like, oh, that's great. I was like, oh, <laughs> rares again? And he's like, yeah. 
prayers again. And I'm like, yeah, I think you definitely had more fun than Calder that day. That Calder was, was, some, Calder tough was... Goals, some tough fields. <laughs> I was going I was through like... it. I was really going through it that day. I I agree. I don't. John to bring Calder in on a bad note, but just like yeah. I look over and I'd be like, I'm having a good time. I'm making all these porters. I'm like, yeah. And then Calder's in the background, I'm like, well, oh, you know, uh, like. Next phase really was just like the casino royale of BR. Oh. Like, all right, if I pull some like 20 point rares, 30 point rares, like I'm gonna have a bad time. Here's the thing, Ian. Oh. You can't relate to us because me and Calder did Calder, did you ever pull anything over a super rare or I, a super rare? Well, I did. I did pull a chase, but it was like Kate we and Lucky. Both pulled. That's right. The, the tough yeah. thing about it really is that like pulling a rare is fine when you pull rare moon knight. You know, mm, it's no, just wow. Even at the high rarity levels in next phase, there are just chases or super rares that don't make or break a team, really. Like, any super rares I pulled were something like Eleguila or Man Bull, mm. uh, or any, like, the one chase was, like, Kate and Lucky, you know? So, and not My? to say that there's oh. bummers, but it's like, yeah, it's a Casino Royale of a set, and I was slamming two hundred dollars on you know red every time and it was hitting black you know my opponents were getting <laughs> whatever they were getting conchu with moon knight they were getting uh prime man or just rare super man thing i want to get another to, wong yeah, another oh, wong. oh geez you know. another wong another wong and i'm just like man give me give me one time one time oh man when someone you know prime vision just deflated oh, that that oh, was really i was there tough i was there that's right yeah that was oh, the no, tough see, one. Oh, I was just, you know, I kept going to my, like, dude, the best figure I pulled all weekend was Prime Kingpin. That was my best figure. Like, nothing, nothing better than that. And I just like, this is just a slog. This is, this is what I feel like whenever I'm playing, you know, 300 Modern with a team that's just getting, just keeps getting beat. And I'm like... I'm not having fun, but then pricing comes around. And even if you came in like last place, you're like, Oh, this was worth it. I got it. Oh yeah. Sweet I, actually had a great time. I was like, yeah, I, I was like, oh, this, I was like, okay, this was kind of worth the slog. Kinda. I, you know, I'd like to have a little bit of fun. Give me something. But, uh, you know, even then, you know, it was a slog, but I almost had a pro had that prime vision. I had him. He's had, had two clicks left. And then he was like, phase out. And I was like, mm, no, this is just, you're going to win no matter what. Let me kill that Prime Vision with my stupid She-Hulk that says no, or whatever he she says. I give objection. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, I was like, just let me kill him, please. And then I, you can win this game. But no, but alas, I was like, no. But it was overall. I mean, I think Worlds is kind of like the standard for Hero Clicks, but I will say that I had so much fun, like. Overall, oh, yeah. at Adepticon, I the I was Adepticon blown away out of, at, out of everything. Like I was, like I'm so glad that one Calder was like, "Hey, will you please, you know, let's, let's get a room together, let's do this." I was like, "All right, I will do it." And then, you know, the icing on the cake was Ian, like, you know, a month out, being like, "Dude, I got time, let's do this." And like I said, hanging out with the boys, you know, they were doing their dial H stuff. I'm just kind of, you know ordering pizza getting you know just just chilling but uh, oh yeah side segment on that oh, okay um, the haters i guess you're you're, oh, you're yeah. gonna have another reason to hate us potentially uh chicago style pizza guys i mean come on what what's going on here what oh. maybe we got a bad pie but they said uh, that's the best place to order from they said this is this is the standard here yeah they said luminati's pizza in chicago no. was the that was what you got to get. So that's what we got. Horrible. So bad. Man. I never felt like we, eating was such a chore in my entire life and then just not good. Just didn't. It yeah, was, just was not good. Just, there's too much. That's it's that simple. It's too thick. There's too much going on. Like you I had to chew it. You did chew the thing. I, I will say this. You you didn't. I mean, you didn't walk away hungry from no, it. No, you could. So. Too. <laughs> also, so, the, what was the the hot dog place we went? Um, oh, what was the hot, name of the hot dog? Uh, the uh, uh, it, it's a um. Oh no, it's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, it's where I got my cake shake, and I can't yeah. remember the wiener dogs or something. Yeah, it's a wiener dog. Um, gosh, yeah, they were that, kind of like Philly cheesesteaks with brats. Why am I? Yeah, that place it's it's me? okay. 
kind of funny, named their dog this. It's another podcast. It's a gaming podcast. Why am I forgetting the name? Because they talk about it all the time. It's like a staple. Man, um, I or if you order a cheesesteak, it is so hard to mess that up. In the same way, it's hard to mess up pizza. Why did they put a freaking broth, yeah. sausage in the middle of it? <laughs> Not it's cheese. Like, you got the, the Philly cheese, right? Oh. You got the steak, and then you got some onions. You put it on bread, and it's like you can use the lowest quality ingredients. That's we had zero like, onions in it. it. Did it have any yeah. onions? Zero. Nothing. I it was just... literally just beef. I bite into it, and there's a brat at the bottom of it. It's <laughs> yes, like it's... <laughs> I didn't order. Like, what the heck? Our best I... meal while we were in Chicago was <laughs> Benihana's. <laughs> oh. I honestly, I think breakfast is my favorite meal. Breakfast oh, at that yeah. scramble Fair place enough, every day. I think I like that more than Benihana's. I bet. I loved it. I don't know. I, we were Calder was kind of sad and alone over there with his little sushi. While we I was having a good show. time, I was not we were, sad and alone. We, I was having a good time. It you didn't have any food on the well, table. Well, no, Calder was crying because the, his milkshake was too spicy. The milkshake? No, it was, <laughs> it was, it was the so opposite. Spicy. spicy. It wasn't? It didn't taste sweet. Well, the milkshake. It was. It was uh, the blandest uh, cookies and cream uh, milkshake. I had stop. Uh, oh, it's too spicy. Oh. I I was a little sad that I ordered the food that doesn't get the chef to like do fun stuff for you. I just. My sushi just kind of came out by itself, but I had a good time watching the chef do do whatever with the other food. It was still cool, but the the milkshake was easily the worst milkshake I had that weekend, which is a which is a bummer. You know, the only thing that irked me the whole time on that uh, on Adepticon weekend was whatever that card game we had. The odds and evens should have been scored. I made sure to get odds and evens on oh, the stupid game. Light. I, and I should have gotten points for both of them. You go, no, it's the total cards in your hand. You don't get to score both those. I said, this game is fun, but I'm mad yeah, in the moment. Black. Okay, let's play another round. Let's go. And Ian's over here. He doesn't. He's got hello and welcome in this thing. And he's winning. I'm like, what the heck, Ian? You don't even care, and you're over here beating me. I was I'm, tired. You guys are like, we're playing games. I was like, I'm like a corpse right now. I'm over here trying my best. I'm like, dude, I'm playing these guys like a fiddle over here getting these black cards for each one. Gonna get so many points. And then and just the lowest score. Like last <laughs> just over here. Ooh, you could have just picked random cards at the end and got more points than this, Matt. Oh my god, you know what? Guys, yeah, come on. Like, all right, I got uh, 90. You got about 80. <laughs> Matt has a uh, 10. 15. <laughs> it's like 10 here we go i'm like okay it didn't get any better i kept trying to do stupid things and you're like matt just you, I, I don't think it was until the last night that we were like he can play one more time with us and i finally won one game and i was like yes put it away yeah. matt never play board. it again got on the feather light board feather light's a blast i love feather it's a good game shout out that's a whiz kids game too shout out whiz kids on feather light uh speaking oh. of i forgot to remedy this on the podcast but the first adepticon uh, podcast me and Simeon recorded. I accidentally said it was Greek pizza was the bad pizza, and that has been corrected. I'm sorry about that, Scott. It's Altoona pizza is the is the pizza when we looked yeah. up Altoona Altoona pizza is the grossest oh. pizza ever. Is when Simeon doesn't typed sound it in. good. It's oh, it's so bad. It's like bread oh. with pepperoni with like an American single on it. Is how it literally looks. It looks disgusting. Uh, I, sorry, Greek pizza is the best pizza, and we got to go try some Greek pizza sometime. Where do we get Greek pizza? That's pretty good. Uh, that is a great question. I'll have to ask Scott. <laughs> I'll have to ask Scott, and he'll he'll give us a good Greek pizza. It's also a good. Uh... I know we met, mentioned a great Greek pizza place at the time, but that was a few weeks ago, and I do not remember. Oh. Just make sure it's in Memphis or Milwaukee, I guess, for next year, so that way we can find one. That's Best actually a good pizza. pizza in Milwaukee. I guess that's another thing to just mention is like hey, Adepticon, Greek- amazing hey. event. Literally can't wait to go back. And even though it's like, I guess, not in the same area, if it's ran the same, if it's got the same people behind it, whatever, I'm excited for Milwaukee. I'm really, really, really oh, yeah. pumped for Adepticon. Um, here's the scary thing they already have the dates already locked in. It's oh, on yeah. that post. They are locked in on a date. Gentlemen. We a year, this already. is a year out. We got to get it at the venue because that was, I mean, it wasn't a big deal to be outside of it. It was like a five, six minute drive to get there. And, you know, we walked in the snow, me in shorts and me in a short sleeve. No big deal. But just to be right there in that hotel, they just had like a little sky bridge and you could have been at the venue or back at your hotel. It was just a sky bridge away. And I was like, that would have been so handy just to be like dude i want to go take a break up to the hotel room be done for exactly. a little bit yeah no, I, so, agree. I, 
we got to get that in. We got to get that booked in. So, oh, big. I have, I have one other shout out as well from the previous Adepticon podcast. Uh, I was not able to record the in the last one, but Calder and Simeon were talking about whether or not I owned a bat cave from the <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. event. And what that ended up turning into is Adam Shiver over at Craftworks Forge reaching out and asking me if I had one. I was like, I actually don't. He goes, oh, well, you know, I'm moving. I need to get rid of this. He's like, if you want mine, I can send it your way. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. How much do you want for it? He goes, oh, no, I'll just send it to you. I'm like, oh, come on, man. At least, we, at least let me get shipping. He's like, no, no, it's fine. I appreciate what you do. So he just sent me a bat cave. So I am one bat cave richer because of two haters. So you know, I want you know I wasn't necessarily hating, but I mean just mean I just thought it was weird <laughs> that a so-called Batman fan did not have the Batcave. Mm. You know, it's just get just, called out, then profit. Go ahead, keep hating. Watch, I'll have a message in my in my PMs now asking for a various Batman item if I own it, and it'll get sent my way now. Calder, thank you. Well, the only thing we gotta get is uh, Ian's gonna have to join us on our morning workouts, Calder. We'll have to force him to come. I'm there. He's in. Better All you, right. better Ian. Let's go. Perfect. Yeah, we haven't we haven't talked about that challenge yet, but in the you know coming weeks we'll probably maybe in a few weeks, yeah. Yeah, we'll I don't have to know. see. I know Matt we'll Matt showed me a a fun exercise that I've been trying to do every time every time I remember. my wrist started to hurt though. I won't lie, like my like that's good. I was like, man, ah, am I getting carpal tunnel? What's going on here? So you yeah, go ahead and mute yourself to this, this entire conversation because you're going to say something inappropriate about our wrist strength. Okay, so okay, let's mm. not let's not open mm. that door. Uh, I think that's a good wrap on everything with Adepticon. I think it was really fun. I do want to talk a little bit about news because there is actually some news that came out this week that is perfect for Matt and I to go over. Scott Porter had a video yesterday on YouTube, and this one was going over the Legacy card from last year as well as the new maps that are going to be coming out. So really quickly, just to shout out the new maps, there's a Walking Dead Frozen Lake map which is pretty cool. It's got a just big section of frozen like lake in the middle. It's, I don't know, like eight or so squares, just so that way it's kind of like eight, eight, eight-ish, whatever, however you want to call it. So there's just a little bit of space in that map that you can go ahead and like you fall through the ice. So when you make an attack, you roll a D6. Uh, actually, just all you have to do is roll a D6 anytime you occupy that space. On a six, you make a water terrain, but then if you attack that turn, you modify your combat values minus one. And also, if you attack that turn, you modify the, the roll uh, plus two. So it's a 50-50 that you fall through this frozen lake. Really cool, really, really, really cool map. Uh, it's all about Scott's character, Luke, dying in the Walking Dead Telltale uh, series, which is a series that like I didn't know Scott was a part of when I played it originally because I was like a little kid. Because uh, it's like 10 or so years ago. It's been a while. But it was one of the few video game series, those Telltale games, that me and my older brother would like play through. And we'd be like, oh, man, what decision do we make? Because mm. all of your like choices and outcomes are like different, depending on like what decisions you make. It's really cool. It's a map I really like. So uh, what do you think about like, like the tech stuff? I mean, we haven't had it in so long. Do you think WizKids should start making some more maps like this? With this I wouldn't got some... mind it. You know, I mean, I, um, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I like I said, I think, you know, I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing. Maybe there's a reason why they don't want to do it no more. But they're uh, uh, maybe I guess it just it makes like, it look adds complexity to it. And they're just it's just a bunch of like added work pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, ah, oh, man, does everything have to be special? And then does that like make the the rest of the map design? What I had just another thing to like juggle. And yeah, they kind of went overboard with it there for not like overboard, but they really, really leaned into it there for a while, especially with like uh, paying for map bonuses and things. So I don't mind seeing special text disappear for a while. But I yeah. don't know, I think one or two maps a year that have some special text is really fun. I would like to get I think getting like, one a year would be actually fun. Yeah, just something most, different uh, to add to it. Yeah, I think like for casual play, especially, I really like the Frozen Lake map cool. just because it's really something fun. I'll play it a bunch, you know, every December or if we do like a fun snow theme kind of build, I think it would be a blast. So I, I really you know, like those special text maps. I'm pro bringing them back one or two a year or something like that. It'd be really cool. Is it worth bidding for the blood just for a little extra blood? I do like the blood. I like the blood on the map. That's pretty sick. Uh, I think it's a cooler variant than last year's the the black car or the yellow car. I think black over yeah. the map. I don't know. It's pretty cool, man. Hey, you know we got one of those. You know we got a. Ooh. We do, we do, we do indeed. We got lucky on that. I was like, oh, cool. We're going away with 
Maps, maps, and more maps. Cool. Uh, I'm going to have to load my truck up. <laughs> that yeah. was a good time. <laughs> Getting it all on a plane last year. I cannot believe. Funny. How did you do that? I still don't know. understand how you fit <laughs> that bag all those so maps. Stuck, and man. Did, did you take... Did you leave it in the box on the way home, or did you actually have to take it out of the box? I I left everything in the box, even like the really dumb stuff that I should have taken. We're talking about a sealed factory the Batman, set, like the Batman factory set. I left in the box. How did you get it in there? Out. I don't. It that blows me. Like yeah. my truck was so full of like maps and LEDs and everything else. I don't know how on earth you got that back home in in your bag. It was, so, I don't know, we prevailed, <laughs> I guess, that, we just worked I mean, it's, it. It is 100% impressive, so I'm like, I it was it was hard enough for me to take my truck of it all home, so power to you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and then shout out Easton Brock, Jalen Major, and Jay Major, they made uh, Major Brock's Bunker. This map, I will say, looks fun to play on, but the kind of Ooh. teams that are probably going to play on Ooh. it. Don't yep. look fun to play against. This map has a lot of elevated, really crazy elevated changes, and it has walls on the rim of elevated. There are a few times where during the elevated change, there's uh, elevated, elevated, wall, wall. So it's like elevated wall, elevated wall. Is this wall. the one with the bleachers that like goes up in elevation each one? Uh, it's not really bleachers. It's like a bunker. It's kind of got like this sound okay. booth. Main Maybe I'm thinking of a different area, map. And then it has like that tank busting through it is uh, oh. like a big part of it so that's just kind of wild kind of insane um but no the really fun thing to talk about that he mentioned we didn't get a picture of this yet but he scott porter was able to announce since this is all public information we get to talk about it now the legacy card that we got to choose for winning fellowship last year that was matt spencer and myself for the team's event one fellowship which is really super cool and it was a crazy awesome prize to go over. So our legacy card was the What If 036 Rare uh, Captain America. This is Captain America. He's got a shield and he has Mjolnir, which is really cool. And Scott Porter kind of mentions a trait, mentions that he's 75 points, and mentions that he has the On Your Left trait, which is uh, once so per fun. game... Uh, Captain America can generate all the bystanders on his card as free, but only if an opposing force has more characters than your force. And then he says he has at least two bystanders. So uh, we, I don't know if you kind of want to talk about the process a bit yeah. on that. Uh, it was really fun trying to figure out how to decide it. I know a lot of people have messaged me saying, wow, you really just forced your teammates to choose Captain America. I, that really wasn't the case. I really promise you guys. No, I, I really I, wasn't. I, I, just to speak out on it, like like I said, for me, me and Spencer, I, like I'll speak for Spencer a little bit since I know him pretty well, but we are very easygoing people. I think half the reason we won this is because you know Spencer does get a little bit excited, and you know he gets he gets you know excited about the games, but overall, all of us are you know one just great people. I think to be around and that we don't want to step on each other's feet, but you know, I think the compromise we came up with to make this so cool. And it's something that we all could get around. I mean, on your left, you, you should, if you don't know what that's about, then I mean, it's, it's something from the, from the movies that, you know, is iconic, but you know, him generating bystanders should give you an idea that, you know, there was some uh, ideas that we had that I think would implement all of us into it, which is, I think the best way to do something when you're making a legacy card between three people, you know? So I, like I said, I, I was just super happy just to be a part of it. We got to talk to some whiz kids employees and, and kind of just voice out, you know, our ideas and just, you know, one, at one point we didn't even ask questions about our legacy card anymore. We kind of had a kind of an idea and we just trying to pick their brain about things that we just, you know, don't get to hear about. So just a really fun process overall. I mean, once in a lifetime prize to win, just to be honest. So, oh, absolutely. Uh, and so it was just cool, you know, and like you said, I could see how this could really tear a group apart. If you're really passionate about something and you guys can't get all on board, but I I'll be honest, the, you know, we all kind of said, Hey, the Calder even came to me. He's like, man, I know you, you know, you really love Hulk and Deadpool. And it's like, you know, are you going to be upset if we, you know, don't pick one of those? Like, no, man. 
It's like we all, I, like I even came up with this system. I said, here's the deal. Each of us, you know, I said, I'm going to be the mediator between you and Spencer because you guys have been in the game the longest. You've known these older figures more than I have. So I was like, here's the deal. Come up with some ideas. Whoever comes back with an idea that, you know, I think is uh, really good, we'll talk about that. And then if we agree on it, we'll just kind of go from there. And, you know, everybody came up with some good ideas. And, the you know, the one that stuck, stuck. And we all just said, hey, let's make it happen. And lo and behold, it sounds like it's going to be a real thing. And that's that's probably what makes me the happiest is we kind of went with this character because of the ideas we had for like what he could do. And yeah. there was a lot of times we we're like, well, what if he isn't able to do those things? Then would we change him? Because you don't get to like necessarily choose what the character does for like this prize. You just get to choose a character to get a legacy card. So it's kind of like, oh, man, if if. You know, we choose this guy and he doesn't do any of this stuff. Are we going to be happy with it? You know, not being like a really heavily end game inspired like version of Cap. In which yeah. case it was like, OK, well, maybe like Web of Spider-Man Deadpool. If, you know, like maybe that's a good choice because he, he could do anything. Or I think Captain Iron America was also kind of up there for a bit because he's really cool. Um, like that guy could do like almost anything. and We'd be really happy. I know okay. one of our early we to... uh, okay. Joker, uh, not Joker, sorry, Lex Luthor. Oh yes. Instantly written out because it was like too complicated to try to like make him do anything we wanted to do. And so we like we weren't gonna be happy just with that character alone, you know. Uh so it was, it was kind of a really interesting process. But once uh and that's just a big shout out to the design team and Brian and everybody at WizKids being just like really open to hearing everything. It's like really, really cool. Uh willing to like work with us saying like not necessarily exactly what it's gonna do, but Hey, you know, we'll listen, you know, kind of give you the time of day, be able to talk to you about some stuff. And it was just really fun talking with them, like what you said, Matt. So yeah. just them being able to and, work with us on everything and say, yeah, sure. Like we can try to, you know, no promises. But we can try to make this stuff happen was really cool. I mean, them shutting down us, just bringing back Scarab as he was as a legacy card, was just kind of <laughs> rude though. I mean, yeah, I was like, guys, day. just like his scare is about to rotate. We just put him right back in there exactly as he was. Yeah. Let's go. The other idea that I know got shot down was the D20 Faust with an additional D20. Dude, it oh, was going to be sick, dude. You wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't even... Hold out card. It was going to be really cool. But uh, we also thought about legacy all the uh, tarot cards and just bringing them back oh, into modern we again. We definitely did not. We definitely didn't. <laughs> yeah, Calder was really not. pushing for that. I remember. Yeah, yeah I, dude, I was like, Calder, stop. I told that. you we're not going to do that. Ugh. I said, stop it. Ugh. But no... I, I do know one thing I was like, no matter what, I was like, hey, can we sneak our name somewhere on these cards or, you know, just try to get our, like, maybe just like our initials somewhere just so they it's forever, like, printed on a card for everybody to have and be like, that's my legacy card right there. But Hell no. They shot that down, too. Yeah. There's a, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. A, that's okay. That's I think, I think for the most part, people kind of like, people kind of remember, like, Leech was, uh, was Adam Friedman and that Iron Man was, like, Daniel Powell. So they'll be like, yeah. yeah. Matt Spencer and Calder, like they'll be like, yeah, absolutely. Like that's those that's Captain goobers America. made this guy. Come on, those goobers! How dare they? How dare they? Those <laughs> goobers. So yeah, it was just a blast finally getting like a little bit of that uh, spoiled. We don't fully know what he does. I won't lie; it made me kind of happy to see somebody already selling one of their <laughs> theirs for like some outrageous dude, stuff. Dude, but, I like, saw some so crazy posts. How it's much really is this funny. worth? Everybody keep asking. It's like, how much is this worth? I almost want to be comment. Uh, prices just be like this. Everybody that's uh, like prices, nine hundred dollars, dude. Uh, one for one on Kevin right now. That's oh, right. dude. So, oh, just straight. Cr- right. Oh, just straight trade across. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably where I would evaluate him at. So he fair. could do anything. That's he true. Could even buy a boat. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, and then I guess for a little other minor news, we did see the free comic book day Harley Quinn. Not going to get into her. That came out. And then just to quickly mention the one Hellfire. note on Harley Quinn. Okay, one, one note, note on Harley on Quinn. Go ahead, go ahead. She is in the same pose as Scott Porter. That is true, except mm-hmm. she's reading a comic book. Mm-hmm. But besides that, Easy she's, print. yeah, like lunged forward, both arms up, holding the comic. Is Scott so Porter potentially her pudding? Mm-hmm. More oh. next week. More next week. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> more. More to come. I have a lot of detective work to do still. If you guys saw my room right now with all the red yarn and newspaper clippings, oh, it'd be bad. And hats. He's just enhancing <laughs> on everything. And hats. Oh, and hats. And hats. 
Uh, and then yeah. uh, I think probably the coolest thing in news that we had this week, uh, the Avengers Hellfire Gala got spoiled. That's literally going to come out like probably at, by the time you hear this, it might be in your hand. But the yeah. Avengers Hellfire like, Gala is 20, like, literally next week. 24th? Yeah, Wednesday 20, or yeah. April 24th. Yeah, next Wednesday. So pretty cool box set. Uh, we don't have to get into any of the dials. If you want to see a really deep dive, go to the last live stream Ian and I had on the YouTube channel. We really... I- Galas, giveaways, and Garo fights. Of course. Of course. Uh, we really deep dive into each character. We even give them like a drip check rating and everything. <laughs> uh, but they all look stellar. The sculpts look really cool. There's a few misprint yeah. errors on it, but the dial usually trumps the card, uh, sometimes vice versa. But the figures that fly, they fly. I don't think there's too many <laughs> worries to worry about it. Um, but I really like this gala set. It's the first gala set I'm going to be buying just because I really enjoy the character selection. I really love the way the sculpts look. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's, really cool. a, it's a buy for me as well. As far as our review goes in 10 seconds, uh, I will be buying that product for <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Matt, do you have anything to say about the Hellfire gala set? Anything fun? You know, I, I, I like how... They got some dice replacement, but it doesn't seem like it's broken where you get to keep doing it or keep gaining the uh, the invite tokens. So I know just you guys talking about that. At least it doesn't seem like it's it's going to be something that pops off once and it's kind of just over. But uh, it seems like some of them some of them are a little bit better than others. I don't like that some of them have a different starting or a, an extra click. Or is it just that they have a yeah they got an extra click right? Some of them are, yeah, so like Dr. Doom and the same America points. are 10 clicks and 5 clicks at 140, or at 100 or 45, but then She-Hulk is 9 and 4 at 140, yeah, and then uh, Captain Marvel is 100 and then 45, but her lower line wow. is 5 clicks, uh, but she only, she has 9, yeah, it's just kind of weird, the split lines are a little over the place, I guess, uh, like, let's see, I guess comparably is like Falcon and Spider-Man. They're yeah, both really? eight and four though. They both have, you know, eight clicks or so they're four clicks and then they're both 75, but Spider-Man is 45 on lower and then Falcon is 40 on lower. So it's just, there's a few different, like, I guess, discrepancies you could say, yeah. for, like lower lines, what's high, what's yeah. low. Yeah. I was just like, my... in there that are legitimately just like, wow, the lower line, <laughs> no chance. And others where it's like, wow, the higher line, no chance. Yeah, I just can't ever see myself with She-Hulk ever wanting... I mean, a Hulk with only four clicks of life just doesn't seem like it ever will work out. Eventually, just seems, Matt. Unless Matt. you're a 10-point prime that becomes a, you know, a free whatever because you just ran through some walls. It would that's the only time you need a low totally ride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's 100 bit fair. I mean, that's, that's fair. Oh, 10 geez. points is the correct assessment Matt. there. Brilliant whiskey. There it is. You will get your monster Hulk, but for now, you'll have to settle for the Golden God himself. The Prime okay. Of the you'll have to from. I, you know what? I'm excited to see because I, you guys, I, we did do this podcast because I'm here right now, and I don't know what this guy does yet. So I'm excited <laughs> to see when you post it. Everybody else that's listening to this has already seen it. And it's like, yeah, he's know. right. They already know how cool I'm he like, is, how insane he is. Oh my like, god! I can only imagine. Okay. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to do any listener questions this week. We'll get to them next week. But make sure you're following Dial H for Hero Clicks on everything, including YouTube. That's where you probably watched our crazy cool Deadpool Weapon X unboxing that happened earlier this uh, this week or today or whenever this podcast comes out. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Make sure to like, comment, follow all those videos and everything. Hit that bell notification. If you want to support Dial H for Hero Clicks, make sure to go ahead and check out Dial H for Hero Hooks podcast or the Dial H podcast on Patreon and become a supporter there. Uh, All that goes straight back into the channel. It goes into buying new equipment, new lights, new mics, new cameras, all sorts of stuff. When I roll up to Best Buy and I say, give me your longest Ethernet cord, Give me your nicest streaming camera, please. They're like, oh, yeah, we know this guy. We know he's he's getting the good stuff. So, you know, it all goes right back into the shows. If you want to support us and help the content that we make, that is a huge help, guys. And then and the best Carter, about- one more thing okay. real quick. Okay. I had it. I forgot. I do want to mention it because it is for the IPF. But oh, yes. Northwest, in Northwest Arkansas, in Springdale, Games Explosion, May 11th, we're yes. going to... We're going to do a 300-point modern 
tournament. All proceeds are going to IPF. We got some, I got King Thor, pretty much anything I want at Adepticon. I sold some of it just to, you know, pay some bills because that was expensive. But we got a old uh, King Thor. We got King Arthur, sorry, King Arthur, old man Thor, uh, Iceman, pretty much all the new Con LEs and some older Con LEs. And uh, uh, I'm going to buy a brick of your choosing, uh, depending on whoever wins. Not only that, Mr. Matt, I believe yes. you're also having a bit of a pizza party. Yes, that's right. Oh. We've got some leftover pizzas. So Good we're pizzas. Gonna supply Matt with six pizza boxes, two of each for his event. And in addition to that, oh yeah, this is the first time you're hearing this. You might have heard a little bit about the Deadpool. Matt is going to be sent over all of the Deadpool stuff that we pulled in our brick unboxing. So you can expect to have a chance to win some Deadpool stuff early. This will be the week after Huntington's. So if you are looking for some more exclusive prizing, another chance to get your hands on that brand new set, then this will be the opportunity. So everything you see in the video, minus a few things, you know, there's a few things we'd like to keep, like Patch, for example, I will be taking. I'm sorry, guys. But the Chase, the Prime, uh, a lot of the higher rarity stuff will be sent Matt's way, so you'll have a chance to win that. Right on. Again, that is May 11th, 300 Modern Age. What uh, what venue is it at, Matt? It's Games Explosion in Springdale, Arkansas. What start time for this turn? Uh, so we're planning. I want people to be there at 10. I'm hoping to roll dice by 1030. Uh, I say that knowing that we'll probably start at like 1045, 11. You know, okay. I'd love to just say, hey, Let's try to roll some dice at 10.30 and get this thing started. Make sure you remake those build sheets. Print those build sheets out the night before. Oh, please, units. please. Help me out. Print them, print them out. That'd be so great. We'll share the uh, the poster on Dial H as well, guys. So if you're looking for some more details, if you're in the area and you want a chance at some early Deadpool, some con exclusives, uh, this will be your chance. Oh, yeah. And also, all the info. Luke, Luke, Luke. Awesome poster. I, you know, uh, I, I wanted to shoot, shout him out, man. He came through and made a awesome poster. Uh, once again, not a graphic designer or anything like that. So I was like, please help me. And he sent over something awesome for us to share. And so. it looks gnarly. It's really sick. It is really cool. <laughs> he made our IPF poster for our pulp tournament as well. Just, they look incredible. They look stellar. I love them. Make sure so. you double check who this tournament is hosted by on the tournament as well, or on the, on the poster as well. <laughs> Ooh, oh, little oh Easter egg. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's pretty awesome. I thought you were talking about they misspelled game explosion or something. Like, oh, now I see what it they is. He misspelled yeah. Matt. Uh, I mean, it's okay. in a way, in a way, in a way, in a way. Let's check the post, <laughs> guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Dial H for Hero Clicks. As a quick reminder, Dial H is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Click singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And for your all your Hero Clicks podcasts, YouTube videos, and more, make sure you dial H. Happy trails.